very much. Now, after a very public row about racism in football last week, it's feared that the issue could be back in the headlines again after this weekend's high-profile fixtures. Kick It Out's annual awareness drive runs until Monday, with players traditionally wearing T-shirts as a show of support for the group's message. But last Saturday, several black footballers refused to publicly back the campaign, claiming not enough's been done to address the problem. It's an issue that has left football divided. Manchester United's Rio Ferdinand was one of several black players who last weekend refused to wear T-shirts backing an anti-racism campaign, perhaps the most potent symbol of the anger felt by many Premier League stars. That anger stems from a perceived lack of action from the game's authorities over recent incidents of racism, including John Terry's racial abuse of Rio's brother, Anton Ferdinand. Oh, I've got to be honest, in, in the way that they, they handled the whole situation, I feel let but down by the FA. I feel like every, every black player that plays and has played felt let, let down. And I think every supporter, black supporter that goes to watch football felt let down. John Terry was cleared by a magistrate's court in July, but the FA set about their own hearing into the affair, eventually banning him for four games. Several black players are now understood to be in talks over forming their own union. But the Ferdinands have said they want to work with football's existing bodies. I think it is bubbling along that race issue. It's, it's not just going, completely going away. But um, the thing is that the awareness is, is getting stronger and it's the PFA, I'm sure, doing their best to support it. And the FA have got to do more with uh, UEFA and FIFA. This weekend, football will try to move on and Rio Ferdinand will be the focus once more as Manchester United take on John Terry's Chelsea. The hope is that the simple act of wearing a T-shirt and offering a handshake will start to repair the hurt and division that has struck the heart of the national game. Richard Conway, BBC News. Well, let's take a, talk a little bit more about this right now. Joining us is uh, Barrister David Nita, who's trying to stop racism in football. Morning to you, David. Good morning. Um, I also know that you're kind of trying to set up a union uh, for black players. Yes. Is that right? What are you trying to yeah, do? Yeah, that is correct. Um, the Society of Black Lawyers, of whom I'm a member, um, we have put it out there that, um, that the idea of setting up a black union may help the situation. So in an ideal world, there would be uh, no issues at all. And... Uh, the, the present union would be able to represent the players properly. But if that is not happening and, and they have the option to think, uh, to think about another structure, another union that can yes. put pressure on, um, on a race in football to eradicate this thing, then we're quite happy to support. And that's all we're doing. We're lending our support. Is there a danger that that polarizes things still further? Not really. I mean, it, it, if you look at the problem of race in sport at the moment, it's beyond racism. It becomes a child protection issue. It becomes a mental health issue. When you look at the, the rise in race, race hate crimes at the moment, 50% is going up. You begin to realize that there's a connection between the racism that's being displayed on the pitch and, and the vulnerability of all our children. So, uh, and when you look at, I mean, if you listen to the stories of footballers talk about the impact of racism on them, then you will see that the whole men mental and emotional state of people can be affected for decades. Because when you listen to these stories, you think it just happened or it happened yesterday. Do so, you think so a union that, that actually understands the needs of black people and led by black people could, could go very far in uh, dealing with this issue. Well, I'm interested. We heard from Alex Ferguson in that report, and he was saying awareness is getting stronger. Yeah. Now, do you think people in the sport, and he's a hugely significant figure, of course. do you think there's a deal of complacency, that we're talking about it a lot? Do you, do you yes. think what's happening is there's lots of talk at the moment, yes. but the reality is simply not changing? I think that is absolutely right. The, the, there is talk at the moment. I mean, a few months ago, I met a professor, Professor Ben Carrington, invited him to come and speak. He's a leading uh, authority in sports and race. Uh, and uh, together with uh, more consultancy, we set up these community meetings. And out of those meetings now, I happen to be working with schools uh, and uh, developing uh, collaborations with schools and football clubs. What we're trying to do is, is pledge that this is the last of racism for a generation. So the, I was working with some year nine students yesterday in Kent, working with Gillingham Football Club. And what we're saying is that there will be no more generations of racism in sports. So to, de to leave it to the present governing bodies and pressure groups is not enough. 
because we've seen for decades this thing is continuing. So what we're doing now, we're looking at the younger generation and saying, how can we make it history and not just talk about it? And I'm just doing this thing for three months. And these bodies exist, have been existing Jim, for a long one time. One thing that occurs to me, I don't know if you look at other sports and think, how come it's not uh, prevalent in those sports? For example, athletics. Yeah. Yeah. Now, no one talks about racism in athletics. Yes. So why is it in one sport and not in another? Well, of course, racism exists in athletics as well. It exists in other sports. You see it in Formula One. We're just talking about Formula One. Do you mean we in, saw the it in the Lewis? We, we, we see the display of racism, for example, you know, what happened in Spain with Lewis Hamilton and so on. However, with football, football is the beautiful game. It is the game. It is the global game. And it attracts all sorts of people. And, uh, and although it's a beautiful game, it, it attracts ugly racism as well. The majority of football fans are, are, are beautiful people themselves who support the game and want a good game. But racism ruins the game. Look at what happened with the Leeds match the other day. And the Leeds manager came out. Uh, and he said, he said, listen, this ruins the game. And justice didn't take a break. They found that guy and he's now prosecuted, the guy who pushed the goalie. Mm. No, that's a physical injury. It heals. But the injury that comes about from racism lasts decades and sometimes transfers to generations. I We've got to stop it. Oh, I'm being told we have to end. But um, can you see players walking off the pitch if, you, if they were in, black, in a union for black players? Would they do that? Is that what the ultimate um, sanction or I, what is I, it? Well, I, I think that any action that will bring about an end to it, it is far too serious. It goes beyond yeah. racism towards adult black males. It affects every child in this country. Uh, um, so we need to deal with it mm. as we would deal with child protection or mental health. Uh, David very Hinter, interesting who is also David. a poet as well. Thank you very much for joining us here this morning. Uh, I'd like to know your views as Thank well you. this morning. Hold We're going to be talking, uh, stay where we are for a moment, David. We're going to be talking later on to Mickey Thomas, former Welsh international, about the issue. Let us know your thoughts uh, today as well. Be interested to hear what you think. How can we get it eradicated from the game? Uh, it is a quarter to eight. You're